Right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we'll make a start. There are still a few people joining us, um, but I think it's good to make a start now. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us this afternoon. I'm absolutely delighted to see you all here. We've got nearly 80 participants on this, which is fantastic. Um, I'm really delighted to welcome you to our first Sharing Leading Practice event of 2021. And I recognise that um, 2021 hasn't quite been the fresh start we all needed, I would say, so far. Um, but really a huge thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I, I also really hope that everyone is, is OK wherever they are. So for those of you who haven't joined one of these events before, um, sharing leading practice events are an opportunity for schools within our Challenge Partners Network um, to share any areas of best practice. And we hosted a really diverse programme of events last term, and we're hoping to do the same this term as well. <laughs> We do obviously recognise that nothing will quite beat visiting a school in person. You don't get to really immerse yourself in that school culture in quite the same way. Um, but these virtual events have provided a really fantastic opportunity to share excellent practice with a wider audience from all areas of the country. And it's been really nice looking at the chat just now as everyone has been introducing themselves just to see that we do have people from all over the country joining us today, which obviously wouldn't normally be possible um, if it wasn't uh, being done virtually. Um, so thank you again a huge amount for joining and we do also really hope that you'll join us for some future events as well. So just before I hand over to our hosts, um, I just wanted to talk through a little bit of housekeeping, if that's OK. Um, so if you could just please mute yourself if you haven't already, that would be really helpful. It just helps to prevent any background noise and it means uh, that obviously the session will run as smoothly as possible. Um, thank you so much, all of you, for introducing yourselves in the chat as we've gone along so far. Please do feel free to add any comments and questions in the chat as we go. Um, there should be some natural pauses, in which case I can take any questions from the chat and pose them to Greg and Gary. Um, and there's also time at the end for questions as well. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could change your Zoom name to your first and last name. So in your video, uh, on the, where your video is, if you just click on the top and the three dots in the top right hand corner, uh, it just means that we can record who was here a little bit easier. Um, as you can see, we are recording this session and that's just to share with others who are unable to attend. So if you don't wish to be part of the recording, um, please do just drop me a message and we'll make sure that you are not in that. And just finally as well, we will send around a short feedback form um, just towards the end of the session. And I'd really appreciate it if you could fill that in as um, it really it helps us to, uh, to sort of shape our future events. For now though, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Greg Scott. Um, Greg is the senior leader in charge of remote learning at Manalees Junior School. Um, that's at the lead school in our Lincolnshire hub. Manalees Junior has actually hosted one of our pilot virtual leadership quality assurance reviews or VL QAs as we know them uh, back in November and their fantastic remote learning was cited as a real strength of the school so we're absolutely delighted that Greg has taken the time to share what they do with us all today and I really really hope that you find the session helpful. So without further ado I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to hand over to Greg. OK, first job of the day is to unmute successfully, which I have done. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, share my screen uh, so you can have a, look, a start to have a look at the PowerPoint. Okay. Um, really glad so many of you could make it uh, to the meeting. I, uh, meeting. I know it it's a really challenging time for us all and I think a lot of us are looking for answers to lots of questions out there. Hopefully I'll be able to answer some of those questions. I've also got some questions that uh, we can pose and have a think about together uh, later on. Uh, Manalees Junior Academy is a junior school obviously. I know I had a question about Key Stage 1 but hopefully um, it will be relevant to Key Stage 1 as well. Um, we are a mixed catchment. We have children from kind of a nice suburb but we also have inner city children as well. Uh, which means we have above average SEND in the school and above average uh, pupil premium and disadvantaged children in the school. Um, really about this session is really thinking about our journey to remote learning, where we've come from and where we are now. Um, when I was thinking back to this time last year, um, it was a very different situation. Um, so thinking back to March in the first lockdown, uh, we had very few uh, children in school. So I know a lot of uh, you are managing up 
to a third of the children in school, and I know that's that's a challenge. Uh, we had very few critical workers in. Uh, we didn't have any in the first lockdown. We didn't have any remote learning going on, but we did have a very strong online learning presence, which the children were used to doing. Um, I had a look in the chat box as you were just coming in, and some of the things that you wanted to get from this meeting were things about well-being, workload. Uh, ideas, it being manageable, um, engaging people, managing workload, uh, challenging the more able, engaging parents, uh, being accessible, uh, how to develop communication, how to, how to support parents struggling with computer skills. So there's lots out there which you um, obviously want answers to. But hopefully going through um, a chat about our journey to start with and then looking about where we are now, um, hopefully um, you'll get some ideas of how to move your school forward. So the plan for the session is really to think about our journey so far, our initial journey. Um, then I'm going to invite in uh, Gary Trotter from LBQ, which is Learning by Questions. And that's a programme that our school has found really useful, uh, both in the class and actually on in during online learning. Um, after that, we're gonna have a look at our more up-to-date plans. So we're gonna share our remote learning plans, our systems, how we got engaged and communication. And then I thought a really useful um, avenue to go down after that would be to just to think about some of the barriers um, to effective remote learning that we face. Um, and then from that, maybe come up with some ideas. And then from that, go into breakout rooms where you can discuss it further. We can come back in and that will lead to uh, the Q&A session, reflections and questions. And I've also got, obviously got some links towards the end of the session uh, to support you as well. Right, so let's get going. So first bit is about thinking about how do we bring teachers and parents and children with us on our, on our journey moving forward. Um, so if we think back to where we were in February, March, um, with teachers, parents, there was a lot of anxiety. Uh, there was a lot of denial about what was going on. There was a lot of frustration um, in the community. Um, so what we had to do is really think about how to manage those um, effectively so we could actually move on. Because we wanted to move from this anxiety, denial and frustration feelings into a period where teachers uh, were more able to experiment, to make decisions, and really to integrate those programmes really fully into what we were doing at Manor Leeds. So from our outset, we really thought about empathising not only with um, the teachers, but with the pupils and with the, the wider community and families, and think about how we could go and support them. And really thinking about doing thing in a very, in things in a very staged way, in a very deliberate way, uh, not rushing into things, but uh, um, going through those processes really seemed to help. So our key word really about moving from one to the other was, was the empathy aspect. So how did we go about doing this? So moving from anxiety into using empathy. So one, we kept messaging really clear to all staff. So from the outset, we really wanted to make sure that we didn't overload staff because we had some staff in school and some staff at home and kept the messaging really clear. Importantly, we kept in place the school's current systems for online learning. So as I said before, we did have a really strong um, suite of, of systems which the children were used to using. So that was really their first point of contact when we went into the first lockdown about just continuing those and the expectations were there. And initially, all parent communication came through our inquiries. Um, now, we decided to do this. The, the, the teachers were very keen on um, talking to parents and accessing parents straight away. But we initially decided that actually it would be better if we had a, a real sort of whole school approach. So just to start with, um, any parent communication came through either into inquiries or via SLT, who had particular roles either to do with safeguarding or online learning. And just to have that one point of contact really seemed to help. And then from that, we could then disseminate it to teachers as we went through. Um, that initial contact, again, James was very, the head teacher was really keen on making contact with parents right from the get go. So he started off with head teacher video messages regularly 
a couple of times a week just to make sure that the parents knew what was going on. And then finally, all online learning, again, was centrally organised just to start with. Uh, so that came through me to start with uh, via the uh, website, just very simple links off the website to the online learning packages that we already had. So again, just thinking about how we managed that anxiety to start with was really having a really clear system in place and, and not going too quickly to start with because we knew, obviously, it was probably going to be quite a long term thing. And um, in the future, we could gradually develop things and not overload parents and families. Um, one way we're thinking about this was uh, using Tuckman's model of behaviour development, because we knew to begin with that in the forming and storming stage, um, things could be very, very challenging um, for developing systems. And what we wanted to do was make sure that we progressed onto the norming stage quite quickly. And the way to do that was to be bypassed to start with. Um, some of the initial things to do with um, letting teachers get involved. So we managed to go to the norming stage quite quickly in that first lockdown period um, by controlling things quite carefully to start with. And then finally, hopefully now we're moving into the performing stage. So we've got a real good handle on what's going on um, and teachers can be a bit more expressive, think about different ways of doing it and try different things as well. So really, it was about that first bit about thinking about empathy and thinking about moving to that norming stage as quickly as we could in that first lockdown. Uh, so here's just a very short example of a very simple timetable that we put out to start with. Um, this was on, on the website and each of those was just a very quick link to our effective mass lessons or white rose mass lessons. In the afternoon, we had bedrock vocabulary going on, and then obviously we had the LBQ system, which was started up as well. So once we got this up and running, enabled it quickly to move, then we brought parents, sorry, teachers back in, um, then to start engaging with parents and children through weekly phone calls, um, follow-ups by the Senko and the PSA really helped get those children engaged. And then from this, we moved to regular Zoom meetings with the class and then regular communication via Dojo. So just to put this in context, this was just our first sort of dipped our toe in the water of online learning. Um, but I think just by that staged approach, thinking about being empathetic um, with all our partners and then doing it in a very staged way really helped us um, develop a system which, which we're benef benefiting from now um, because those systems were put in place very carefully and now we can rely on them um, and our engagement is really, really strong. And also this last thing, parents consultations to aid transition as well. Uh, towards the end of the summer term, uh, we made sure that we had um, full parents consultations that was with their old teacher and their new teacher uh, taking part. Um, these were face to face, but they were socially distanced and it really gave the parents a chance to talk through their concerns and think about how we were going to move forward as a school. So that definitely really helped those parents consultations. Right, I'm just bearing in mind the time. So that was our first part of the journey. When we come back to me, we're going to have a look at how we developed uh, more fully into uh, the autumn term. Um, where we're going to go to now is to go to Learning by Questions. We're going to introduce Gary Trotter. Uh, we've been using Learning by Questions for a while now. We found it really, really useful uh, in the classroom and also supporting our online provision. Uh, Gary's going to talk to you about 20 minutes introducing Learning by Questions. It's a fantastic resource which uh, our school has used widely. Um, and I hope you'll enjoy seeing what he has to say. So I'm just going to bring in Gary at this point. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Gary. Hi. Hi. Well, thanks, Greg. Thanks for the, the introduction. And uh, thank you uh, for having this opportunity to come along and uh, talk to you all this uh, this afternoon. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take you through uh, LBQ, what we are. And hopefully you'll, you'll have a little go as well. So perhaps you can have a little go um, as a pupil uh, while, while you're on today and uh, see exactly what it's like for the pupils when they, they join. Um, 
very much what uh, Greg has said. Uh, when we first met James, uh, probably getting on for 18 months ago now, it was very much with a view as using LBQ in the classroom. And LBQ very much was designed as an in-class teaching tool. Um, but what became very apparent, uh, not only to James, when we went into lockdown, but to a lot of other schools around the country, was suddenly how LBQ can uh, be used to fit into your remote learning or blended learning solution in the classroom. And uh, just to uh, put something on that, uh, last week, we had our most uh, feedback ever from pupils. We had over 3.2 million responses from children at home and in school using uh, learning by questions. And one of the reassuring things is, is that every question they answered, they all had received immediate feedback uh, for that question, whether they got it right or wrong. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen. I'll give you a bit of input about LBQ and then we'll, we'll actually uh, have a go. So let me just share my screen here. So hopefully you should be now able to see um, my, my screen only by questions. And uh, basically, as I said, LBQ was designed very much as a, an in-class teaching tool, but again, has been used in remote learning. Um, but what I'm going to show you today, hopefully in the next few, uh, next 20 minutes, is how we use continuous formative assessment and immediate feedback within our platform um, and how this increases pupils' engagement and, and builds confidence as well within the pupils. And that's in school as well as at home. Um, we'll look at how it's used to develop resilient learners and, and maximise uh, the children's learning opportunities within that as well. Uh, basically, um, I'll, I'm, what I'm going to show you as well is our, compre what our comprehensive coverage of the core curriculum. What we've got is uh, high quality resources, over 90,000 questions now um, across the, the core curriculum. Uh, which are, are, are put into question sets, which can then be sent to children. Um, I'm going to also look at how we automatically generate data as well, um, which can improve outcomes for children, so that teachers can, rather than spending time lots of marking, they can actually look at the data and evaluate what's going on with their ch children and plan the next steps in learning. Um, and a, a, key, a key element of that as well is, is it's about the professional judgment of teachers as well. Uh, we're not an AI solution. Uh, it's about teachers looking at the data, evaluating, planning next steps. And it, we're very much about the, the teacher being central to what LBQ does. And, and hopefully you, you're going to see how easy it is to use and get started as well. Um, it's nice uh, at the moment, uh, LBQ is, is increasing rapidly in use across the country. Teachers are beginning to see how LBQ can help them with remote learning. Uh, we're getting a lot of um, feedback from social media, that's teachers and senior leaders. And if you go onto Facebook and Twitter, you'll, you should see that hopefully. It's also nice to be recognized by other uh, organizations for the quality of, of, of what we do as well. But the key part to learning by questions, uh, in my mind, is about the way that you can use for effective intervention, but it's the instant feedback that you get through LBQ. Um, and Research has shown that instant feedback is an intervention that does make an impact on uh, children's progress and attainment. Uh, and we'll look at how we, we deliver that feedback to children as we go along. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm just gonna go to our website. And if you want to find out a little more about LBQ, if you go to our website, lbq.org, uh, we do have a section on remote learning. So if you click on that, it will take you to information about how LBQ can support you uh, for your remote learning solution. Uh, but not only that, when, we, when children start to come back from uh, the first lockdown, uh, what we found was that we very much fitted into the primary catch-up support um, advice that was being given by the Education Endowment Foundation about uh, finding gaps in learning and also then using LBQ to plug those gaps as well. So we can also fit into that. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we are confident about our resources, so you can actually browse those resources for free. If you click question sets on our website, you can literally go to look at all of our questions, all of those 90,000 questions. Uh, you don't have to do them individually because we have a curriculum map that shows you our coverage for the different year groups. And if you just click on one of those topics from national curriculum, you can view all of our questions for free. They're there. Uh, we, we're happy for you to go and look at that. 
So once you've finished this, if you want to go to our website, you can go and look at those at your own leisure. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to log in. So if I log in, this is um, how teachers would access uh, learning by question resources in their school. Um, you put in a, a password and uh, your login details and you click login. And this will then bring you to what we call the MyLBQ Hub or the Teachers Home page. And this is where teachers can access all of the question sets for their year group. Now, when you actually uh, buy into LBQ, you get access to everything. So you can get access to resources for year three if you're on year four, year five. So if you're looking at uh, using resources to differentiate what you're doing, you can do that. It also means if you're in year six, you also get access to year seven resources and above. So if you've got children you want to challenge, you can tap into those resources as well. And if you're in a secondary school, it means if you've got children who may be struggling, you can tap into the prime resources to help support them as well. So when you buy into LBQ, you get everything. And you'll see here at the top, this is where you access our resources. Uh, if I just look a bit farther down, uh, you have a calendar where you can actually plan your activities for the week so that they're already in there. And also a key element here is that every answer a child puts in is never lost, it is saved. So you will never ever lose a response from a child. Uh, and you can access those from your latest results or all results down here. So you can go back and look at those results at any time after the children put that in, you will never lose anything. But what I want to do is show you how easy it is to get started. So let's go and find a resource to have a go. Uh, so let's say we look in mathematics. I just click on mathematics. Uh, this will bring up then all of the topics which you recognize from national curriculum down here on the left hand side. Uh, so you should recognize most of those. But if I scroll down, you'll also notice we do have a reasoning and a problem solving section here where if you just want some reasoning questions or some problem solving questions, you can just go straight to those. We have an assessment section. So if you wanted to look at some practice for uh, year six SATs, that's in there, but you've got your end of year two, end of year three, and end of year uh, reviews. You've also got your topic reviews, so you can do those. And these could be used either uh, after you've taught something, or you could actually use these before you teach something. It's up to you. Um, you can see you've got practice for multiplication. And we've also got down here the ready to progress um, activities. Um, so you can use those as well, and they're in there. And then finally at the bottom, uh, some schools use white rows, some schools don't, but if you do use white rows, we've got the white rows block reviews. Uh, we do work very closely with white rows. We have done for a long time. Uh, we're not a white rows resource. We can support any um, sort of scheme that you're using, but uh, white rows certainly like uh, what we do. Uh, so they are in there as well. So what I'm gonna do here is then, I'm just going to search for uh, year three and four activity. Um, I'm just gonna go into measurement. And I'm going to find an activity for perimeter. So here's one, find the perimeter of a simple 2D shape. And I just click on that, and then it will bring up the question set to the right-hand side. So before I actually teach this or, or plan it, I can look through it. And what you'll notice is our question sets are designed around a mastery approach to teaching. Uh, so what we've done is we've broke them into four sections in maths, starting with understanding, going through to fluency, into reasoning and then into uh, problem solving. Um, and the, you can look at those. If you want to see the image large, you can look at those by clicking on them as well before you teach it. So once you've had a look at the question set and you decide that this is something you would like to, to use, above you have three options, plan, start and teach. So if I click plan, just to begin, here you've got your calendar. And you can see I can add this activity to any day. I just click on that. Uh, and that is now in there waiting for me. Um, so when I get to the day uh, and I go into my uh, LBQ hub, it'll be in my calendar waiting for me. You can even allocate it to your class. So you can look at the classes you've got set up here. And you can see I've got challenge partners. So I could actually allocate this to my class. Uh, and I can put in a note or a memory jogger there. So that'll be in there waiting for me when I go to, to launch it. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Um, the next thing that um, I can do is 
um, I might go into teach mode. So what we've found with uh, remote learning, schools have used LBQ in a variety of ways. Some schools have opened the activity for the whole day. Children will drop in at any time during the day and do the activity and teachers drop in and just check what's going on. Some teachers have actually said, no, we're going to run an hour lesson. It will be open at nine o'clock till 10 and they've come in and they've let the activity run and they have just monitored the, the answers coming in. But some schools have actually run Teams or Zoom meetings and done some live teaching. So if I go into teach, what this will do is it will bring LBQ up as a presentation. And now what I can do on here, I can use that inbuilt interactive teaching tool. So normally if I was in a classroom, I'd be on a panel at the front, but here I can start uh, explaining about perimeter. So you know, we measure the distance for each edge. And then what we can do then is uh, if we add them all together, so we go round there, we add them all together, it will give us the total distance around that shape. And finally, if you look down here below, we can then add them all together and that will give us our total distance here. That's how we work our perimeter. But at any point you can bring down a little whiteboard and I might say, right, look, here's a, another problem. Here's a square. I'll give you one side. Now what's a perimeter? So you can see how we can use it in teaching as well. Uh, and we can also answer the questions just like children would on their devices. So we can actually click on a, an answer and click answer and the feedback will appear. Now we give a range of feedback uh, depending on the answers the children put in and try to give feedback uh, dealing with the common misconceptions that children might have and to guide their learning. Uh, I can at any time retry, have a go. And as you can see, we even give feedback if they get it right, because I think it's important children know exactly why they got an answer right, but also it feeds back the type of language they might use in answering questions as well. So they can see an answer there as well. Uh, and I could even click on here and go right the way through to one of our problem solving questions. And I could use this uh, as a starter to a lesson maybe. So if I'm doing live teaching, I could bring this up as a starter give the children some time, feedback their answers to me there as well. So teach mode is in there, but actually what most schools have done is they've actually sent these to the children working at home on their devices. So I'm gonna quickly have a go at doing that. What I do is click start. Now we have two ways of, of joining, informal class and track class. Informal class is a discrete activity that is a one-off activity where the children are finished, if they come back to it, it will start from scratch. If we run a track class, it will remember those students and they will start from the last place they finished. What a lot of schools are doing for remote learning, because it's simple, they're doing informal class and that's what I'll show today. So I'm gonna to go to informal class. I choose my class. So you enter the class name here. So I'll choose challenge partners, click start, and it will generate a three digit code for me, XSC. Now, the simplest way to get this out to the children, if you can see this address at the bottom, www.lbq.org forward slash task, if I right click on that and copy the link address, I'm going to put this into the chat area. Um, so two seconds. So if I go to the chat area, I'm now going to paste this into chat. And if you want to go in and click on that link, you can actually put this code in XSC when you get to the, that link and ask for your the code and your name, uh, and you can actually join this activity. Um, I'm going to also put this in uh, something. So hopefully I can get someone to join from my organization. Well, if nobody else joins, but I can see already I've got six pupils already joined. Uh, and if you click go, you can actually have a go and start answering some questions there for me. Um, now, what I would like, if you could put some wrong answers in for me, you'll be able to see the feedback. Uh, and also, um, if you then uh, have another go, you might try and get it wrong for me. I like that everybody's putting wrong answers in for me now, that's lovely. Um, so what people should hopefully be able to see on my screen now, um, if you're looking at my screen, you can see I'm tracking live exactly who's entered this activity. And I'm tracking exactly how they're getting on. I can see children who've got these questions right, and I can see exactly who's got them wrong. Uh, and that's coming in straight away. Um, now, I know I'm limited on time, so I'm gonna do quickly here, so I'm going to pause you all, and I'd like you to come back to the screen I was sharing earlier. So hopefully now you can see I've paused you all, and this is a very important 
uh, button in the classroom because if you want to talk to your class and get them to listen, you, you do need to pause, otherwise they will carry on answering questions. But if you now come back and have a look at uh, the tracking grid that's been built up, you can see, I can instantly see how your how pupils are getting on. So for example, you'll notice it just has pupil one, two, three, and so on. If I just click here at the top against the name, you can see I can reveal names there. Um, so I can see exactly who is answering questions. Obviously green tells me you're getting those right. So that's great, I don't need to worry. Um, red tells me that you're getting it wrong. And you notice uh, people 23 has got that wrong twice. So I know that they may be struggling a little bit there. Um, and then yellow tells me that uh, these pupils have got it wrong, but have now got it correct. And I can see exactly how many attempts they've had to get it correct. So I can see pupil five had three attempts, but got it right. Now at any time here, I can click on uh, pupil 23, the red two, and I can go in and see exactly what answers has been put in. Is there a common misconception? Is there a common mistake being made there? I can go back um, and I can now look at the top. So if I look at the top of the colours, it gives, gives me an indication of how my class is progressing. So I can see it quickly that uh, green, that's fine, question one, then it goes to orange. So as we progress through green, light green, yellow, orange to red, I know more pupils are struggling. So now what I can do here is I can click on the number two at the top and view all the responses of my class. And again, this will show how have, have people put um, the, the wrong answer in, or the same. Is there a common misconception? And that doesn't appear to be here, but you can see there might be. Now, at any time, I can, again, enlarge this question and go back into my teach mode. Yeah, and I can actually do some teaching here. So I'm going to circle that. And now what I'm going to do is, using the green play button, I'm going to send that to my whole class. So if I send them my whole class, if those people who logged on now go back on as a pupil again, you should see that question has arrived with you and you've got my writing on there, which could be used as a clue. And if you put your answers in, I can see now that everybody is getting that right. So obviously that's helped. Uh, and then once they're all in, I can then uh, stop. Um, so if you now go back, if you're not on my tracking grid, if you now go back to that uh, and I'll go back again, um, I'm aware that I'm running out of time. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of things. One is if I click on the dashboard, this will give me an overview of, of what's going on. And that will tell me the question most children are struggling on at the top here. What, so I can see question two is what most people are struggling on. I can look at individual pupils wrong answers. I can look at individual pupils progress and I can get an overview of uh, what is actually happening there. And you see it's changing because answers are coming in live again because when I stopped it and paused it, I can see you're answering questions again. So you can track that live. Now at any time I can add a task. So if I find some pupils are struggling, I can go in and add a task. Uh, so it could be another math task differentiated, or it might be as some schools have done, they've run an English uh, task, uh, a math task, a science task for the whole day and children have logged on as well and done that. And you can see here, we cover grammar, grammar punctuation, spelling, but we've also got a range of guided reading texts in here that I can add as well. And I just click start and that is now there. And I say, if I was on as a pupil, uh, I could click out of a little door in the top le uh, left-hand corner and I could go and start task two. And now you can have up to three tasks running at once. Uh, and then if I go back to my OBQ, at any time I can go into all results and I can then search through uh, my results. Uh, and this is where I'll find all of the results that I've done in the past. Uh, and you can see, I can just view any results uh, and go back in any time. So rather than having to spend your time marking, you're actually evaluating what's gone in the class and hopefully that's feeding back into your next steps in learning. Um, now there's a lot more to LBQ than that. You can adapt all our question sets. You can even cherry pick questions from different question sets to create a new quick quiz. Um, oops, sorry. So, um, so you can actually create your own question sets using our question sets, and you can even create your own question sets from scratch if you want. But most people really enjoy using the question sets we've created. Um, 
Okay, Greg, I'm aware that I've uh, reached my 20 minute slot. So um, I, I don't know if you would like me to say anything else at the moment or whether that's, that's enough for now. That's really comprehensive, Gary. Thanks for that. Um, uh, I'm sure teachers really appreciate seeing that um, in action. I think that's the best way to show it, isn't it? Because the office is online and, and people sharing the match, but seeing it in action and working uh, is really cool. So thanks for that, Gary. Yeah, that's great. And I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together uh, an email, which I'm going to send to challenge partners, which, which I'm hoping they, they'll be able to send out to schools with links to uh, the areas I've talked about. Uh, and also, um, you know, if there's anything we can do to help uh, anybody who'd like to find out more, how, how they can get access to that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if there's any questions there before I move on at all that have come up uh, for me. Um, um, no, nothing in the chat at this stage. Thanks, Gary. Lovely. Thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, thanks, James. I know, I know that you're a great advocate for it and it's gone down really well. Uh, one last thing I will say, what somebody put on about pa engaging parents, the feedback we've had from all of the schools who've been used in lockdown, uh, and some of them had served their parents, is that it's been one of the, the things they've had least trouble getting their parents to, uh, their children to to do. They love doing it, they're engaged with it. And we also, parents said they feel supported by the feedback we're giving. They feel supported by that as well as their children, because they haven't always got the knowledge to help their children and <clears throat> love the feedback we give. But so uh, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Gary, there's just actually a couple of questions just come in. Um, yes, one of is. which is, is there a trial period for this? Uh, yes, if you go to our website, uh, you'll find there is a, a free trial. Um, and also, uh, just be aware, um, at the free trial at the moment, you can only run a session for one and a half hours. It's one of the things, obviously, with the free trial. Uh, whereas with the, the full version, do be aware, you can have it open till midnight. Uh, so, you know, um, that's one of the limitations. One of the other limitations with the free trial is because of GDPR, you don't, you don't sign a GDPR agreement, we obviously can't release the data to you. So um, just be aware the data that you get you know, is, is only there that day and you need to record it in some way for that day if you, if you did. But normally we can release all that data to you afterwards and you can go and look at it any time. Okay. Thanks, Gary. Else? Um someone's also asked, is it an expensive resource? Um well I, I think as James put there, uh, you know, we think it, it, it's great value. Um and what I'll do is I will oh someone's put it in there for me. Um, I will put that in, but it all depends on the licenses you have. We do have a discount break. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put some together with, uh, with channel partners perhaps to get out to you so that we can hopefully get something there for you. Yep. Thanks. And just one last question. Is there an option for questions to be read to pupils? <laughs> okay. Um, at the moment, no, that there isn't. Uh, I get asked this an awful lot. Um, we do have some sound support for spellings that where they're read out. Uh, but the issue with sound support then is if you've got it at the moment at home, that's not a problem because they're all at home. But if they're in a classroom and it all starts being read out aloud, you then have issues of answers being read out. And then if you have headphones, there's an issue of um, managing headphones and things like that. But also, I, I, my background is I used to be part of the psychological service in Norfolk as an advisor for them. Um, and you can get text readers that will read any text in any programme. And that often is a better solution for children that need that than it being read in the actual programme itself, because it's only read within that programme. So if you want the questions read out, there are um, text readers out there, some free, uh, some you purchase that can be used to read text that you highlight on a screen and they could be used to do that if you needed it. Thanks, um, oh, just put, is this a set of platforms like Google Classroom? No, it's not. It's not instead of. <clears throat> it's uh, very much, uh, we are a, a tool to add to your armory of things that you're using. And I think that Greg will talk about that uh, in a second. Okay, is that okay? Thank you, Gary, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Sorry, I've overrun my time a little bit. I do apologise, but I will. Uh, I will stop sharing. Sorry. Thank you, Gary. Thank you very much. So we're just going to go back uh, to where we were. So we found uh, LBQ really, really uh, useful. <clears throat> 
teaching children across the curriculum in lots of different areas. It's not just maths and English, they do geography and science as well. Um, in particular, um, when you're looking at some of the results, <clears throat> So some of the things that, that sort of highlighted for me, really, that teachers can gauge areas uh, that may require more teaching. Um, so I've quickly just snipped uh, one of the things that I did with my children recently, which was on times by 100. Um, and af this was after they'd been taught in. It was just really gauging to see how well they got on. And lots of green areas and actually children having one or two goes, but then being successful. Then actually when they get into the reasoning and the problem solving, there were a few more issues, which means that maybe we need to go back and really embed that sort of... Uh, um, so it's a little bit more so they can actually go through the reasoning questions. Um, it's really good uh, for identifying uh, misconceptions. Like Gary said, when you look at the, um, the results coming through, you can definitely see um, if there is a pattern to the things that the children are getting wrong or some of the questions that they're adding. Um, individual or whole class feedback can be given. Obviously, um, you can't do that live, but you can obviously do that later on in the day when you when you have a chance to talk to them or if you if, or if you are doing a live lesson you could do it live as you go through it's very useful for going back and thinking oh this this type of question was the type of question that generally the class was getting wrong and then you can you can you can pull up some of the questions then you you may maybe in a later day zoom call you can go through with, with them and uh, readdress some of those issues that they might have had with those questions because sometimes you know when you're teaching definitely when i find when i'm teaching on zoom and things like that you really struggle sometimes to work out who has actually got that and who really understands it. And by doing these little quizzes and these, these activities, it, it really opens your eyes to see, um, you know, whether the class have actually got that concept or not. As I said, you can assess learnt content really easily. Uh, weekly or more long-term reviews of learning are really useful. Um, and as Gary said, that you can actually create your own question sets as well. So we use them across the curriculum. You can go in and create your own um, uh, quizzes for history and different areas. And uh, you can insert pictures and lots of different things um, just to make sure that you're picking up on any of those misconceptions. So it's really good. Uh, it's been really worthwhile for our school. And um, we're continually learning about it and learning how to adapt it and work for us for our, to support our remote learning. So I want to move on now to um, this academic year uh, from uh, in the autumn term and really thinking about how we ensured that children and parents had the knowledge and tools to start remote learning. I know that was one of the questions earlier uh, that we had, how to support parents in particular. Um, and how did we give more ownership and responsibility to the, to the children? So really, as, as soon as the children started in September, we were thinking about um, the challenges that would face us because it was clear in September that the virus was still out there, children having to self-isolate, groups of children have to self-isolate, classes were going off. So we really needed something up in place um, where the children really took ownership. And we knew if they went off the very next day, they would have a package of stuff to, to, to take them forward straight away. So the way, the way that we did this was by supporting the children through remote learning, through knowledge uh, folders. Uh, this was shared widely, so we made videos on it and posted it on our website. Um, and all the children had their own bespoke uh, knowledge folder um, for each year group. And in there, there was so much stuff which they could then access from home. Um, it's a folder that they would have uh, in school, they bring it into school and then take it home with them. Um, and then in there, they'll have so much information. So the very next day, if they were self-isolating, they had a knowledge folder which they could go in and, and start learning straight away. So what we did, we, we made a short PowerPoint for them and their parents, and we ensured that we um, shared this with, with the children regularly. So they knew exactly what was going to happen if that happened to them. So what happens if I have to self-isolate at home? So this was the, the PowerPoint that we gave them. Um, I won't spend too long in it, I'll just run through briefly. So what can I use at home? So here we have all the different platforms that we use, uh, Learning by Questions, Spelling Shared, Purple Mash, Fast Dojo, all the things that the children access on a regular basis, um, which they used. Um, your teacher will be in touch either through Class Dojo or Zoom or on the telephone to help you understand what you need to do. But the children knew that the very next day, or even in that evening, um, their teacher would be talking to them about their expectations of what they needed to do the very next day. 
Um, what do we use to help us remember our knowledge when we've learned at school? So again, these were important things we need to talk about. The children, um, knowledge organizers for each of their subjects. So these were in their knowledge folders. Um, by learning, again, just re reviewing all the platforms which they had. Uh, thinking about in the classroom, what displays and posters that they found useful and uh, they were in their knowledge fo folders as well. Uh, in the classroom, we have um, knowledge, knowledge maps of all the learning that they do across the year. Um, so again, that just brings them back to making those links um, across the different subjects. Spelling lists and spelling maps, and then obviously anything else that was um, pertinent to that particular child, they could also have in their folders as well. So these are what the knowledge folders look like. Each one had a different color. Uh, so year three, purple, green, blue, and then year six, yellow. And in each of the folders, we had things like uh, timetables, curriculum maps, online learning, logins, which I know is a bane for lots of teachers. So they had all their logins, which they had straight away. So we didn't get all those questions about my child can't log into this account because they can't remember their login details. Uh, knowledge organizers for all the subjects are in there. Geography things are in there. Lots of support for English and maths in terms of spelling, um, in terms of methods for maths. Loads of things we put in there. Uh, your knowledge folder will help you revise key knowledge and facts and new ones too. It'll also help you stay organized and use your timetable so you are effective learners at home. And then we obviously put on the children that we really wanted them to step up and be responsible um, for this resource because we think it's a really powerful resource for them. Uh, so again, acting like a secondary school pupil, making sure that they are responsible for taking it home and bringing it every day um, and really giving that ownership over to them. And then we moved on. So once they un understood all about the knowledge folders, we discussed with them what would happen if, if a whole class has to isolate, um, not going onto the website and where to find things. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, we'll flick through it. Uh, but home learning not being optional, taking part if you're isolating at home. And this obviously went out to parents as well. Um, so parents had contacts and then obviously a link to our full remote learning plan which they could access, but this is really a shortened version of that. So that we definitely found that a really useful thing um, to share with the children as we move forward. So as a school, how do we adapt to the conditions uh, and the needs as we moved into the autumn term? So, Thing. So as we develop through the autumn term, through September into November, um, again, that was a period where we just had individuals and groups um, and maybe class bubbles going off the odd. Sometimes we had a year group going off, I'm sure like the rest of you did. Um, so we really encouraged teachers because we're into this, really through this norming stage, into this performing stage. We really wanted teachers to have a go at different things and to trial different approaches. Um, so sometimes we had um, so sometimes we had children self isolating, and we would um, zoom the live lesson to them, or that could be groups of children. Uh, we even had a teacher off that was self isolating who zoomed herself uh, back into the lesson in school and uh, supported the TA and taught some lessons via Zoom each day, just so she had that contact with the children. So again, it was really looking out to teachers and teachers feeling supported at that time um, for them to just have a go at different things um, and to try different approaches. Um, another thing that we did was change the school day. Uh, we, we closed at 12 on a Friday and we started early at half past eight in the morning. Um, this has re worked really well. And I think because of our partnerships, our strong partnerships with the parents, uh, they were quickly, actually, they quickly came on board with this. Really enabled that um, uh, the TAs within the school didn't have to move around too much. They could stay within their bubbles um, uh, because obviously our PPA time as teachers would be that Friday afternoon. Um, so the teachers were teaching all week to their classes um, and there wasn't, a, there wasn't too much movement around. So we were trying to reduce the, the amount of bubbles that had to go home um, if there was a case. But the change of the school day really worked. And actually the way that we did the timetabling, um, 
in that the children actually had more time in school than they did uh, in the previous year. Uh, strong communication with parents. Um, again, that has been really at the forefront, starting with James, the head teacher, um, lots of communication going on there, and then working through, working through the teachers, regular phone calls, regular updates, working with the SENCO, um, and we have a fantastic platform which we use, which is uh, Class Dojo, uh, which is really, really embedded in the school, and um, uh, it's really why I think uh, we've developed well um, as a community with our, with our families. As I said before, we're not changing things. We haven't changed a lot. We continue with our systems and structures that are already embedded in the school. Um, so there wasn't anything new for the children. The children were used to doing things in the classroom. They're used to having the homework set each time. So we tried to keep those structures going on. So there wasn't new things happening. As I said before, um, we did look at other programs. We did look at um, Microsoft and Google and Teams and all the different other aspects. But actually, we, we, we decided actually just to keep, keep with the things where um, the parents are really comfortable in using, or which is our Class Dojo system. Uh, Class Dojo is fantastic, you know, even compared to the other systems. Really, the, the communication is really good. Um, and a, an area which we are really developing is the portfolios area, uh, because what you can do is create activities. You can send children um, video instructions, spoken instructions, and they can respond with text or video or photos or drawings. You can add worksheets on there, which the children can write on. There are, are spaces where the children can type up stuff and send it to you. So actually, you know, we, did, we thought, OK, well, let's try a different platform. Let's go for something different. But actually, we had something in place in the school, which was already really strong, um, which we decided to keep. Um, so from there, we developed a, a remote learning plan. Uh, and again, we tried to keep it really straightforward. Um, so the teachers knew, and then obviously this was shared with parents as well, what would happen on day one if uh, my child was isolating? Um, I'm not going to read through it all because I don't think we're going to have time. But again, it, it's just there um, and it was shared with parents. Um, the simplified version was obviously shared with children. So people knew what was going on. Um, if a whole bubble or, or cohort were isolating because of an outbreak, um, and then finally move forward into the whole school closure, um, which is the state we're in now. So where are we now? So really we're at a place where we are um, doing really, like a lot of schools, I think, a balance of live and recorded lessons. Um, we use uh, PowerPoint, the new version of PowerPoint uh, for recording lessons. And that, that's, we find that really useful. Uh, we use Zoom for live sessions. Um, we have regular opportunities for quizzing and feedback using LBQ. We use regular school online programs. Opportunities to share successes. So we always have an end of day meeting with the class as well. But all teachers do that. And what we do is we'll, we'll, we'll take things that have been going on in the day. We'll celebrate those at the end of the day. And like Gary said, if you've identified any misconceptions during the day, you can go back to them. And that end of day session is really useful for that whole class feedback. Um, or individual feedback and also that celebration and also you can set set the children up for the next day as well so we always have a morning meeting and an end meeting um, importantly we've really made sure that we've set aside time for PHSE each week uh, and that's locked into that Friday morning so we don't have an English session or a math session on that Friday morning we base it all around PHSE and enrichment activities um, we've also actually started something new um, again, to monitor that well-being. Oh, this last thing on here is Impact Ed, which I know some of you might have used before. Um, it is um, a platform where um, they will question the children and give you uh, updates um, about how they're developing with their, their well-being. We decided to monitor the children's well-being across the autumn. Too. So lots and lots going on in the school. Um, what are the key messages really? Just being really clear with the instructions, the children having ownership over their, their home learning. Um, great communication through parents through a system that which was embedded in the school. Um, and really um, just thinking about how we provide good learning opportunities and feedback for those children. So as we move on, just thinking about the time. <clears throat> as we move on, I just want to think about some, some questions 
although remote learning obviously is happening in lots of schools and it is is working i do think there are some some questions that are barriers to effective learning uh, and we'll have a little think about those in the next few minutes so really thinking about solutions um what challenges and barriers to effective remote learning uh, what could be missing in terms of our teaching and learning that we naturally do in the classroom but it's much harder when you go to that remote learning stage um, so I listened to, um, I think it was a podcast by Dr. Uh, Robin Bevan, head teacher of South End High School. And it really sort of made me think about the things um, which could be missing uh, to do with remote learning. So these were the things that sort of were highlighted. Um, ability to effectively mediate new content, which the children are taught. Capacity for the teacher in, in the remote environment to be able to engage successfully uh, with those diagnostic and probing questions and again people's ability to engage in that constructive re-articulation of their learning all that talk that goes on in the classroom and we do a lot of talk um, at Manalees um, really that that aspect is quite difficult to do remotely so I'm just going to look at each area and then hopefully that will be something we can come back to and, and talk about when we go out into our breakout room so again, ability to, to mediate um, new content. So bringing expectations, the teacher is conscious of the reactions of pupils in the classroom. And again, I find that quite challenging to do when you're on Zoom. Obviously, you can have some of the pupils there in front of you, you can see what they're doing. Again, it's not the same as being in front of the class. Um, the teacher really has a critical role in mediating this new information uh, that they're giving to children. But can there be effective learning just through the pre presentation of content? Well, I would say no, it's very difficult to do that. So just putting up PowerPoints um, or even a PowerPoints with voiceovers is quite challenging to do. But again, I, I do think that this can be um, developed through things like small steps, uh, practice, modeling. Um, something I've used a lot in the last couple of weeks is the visualizer. Um, Visualize is fantastic because it enables you to do that direct teaching. Uh, they can see you writing, they can see you uh, creating maths problems, they can see you working through it. Um, and really that sort of in that sort of dual coding way of, of, of developing things in a very uh, sequential way where you're linking the images with the, with the language as well. I find that worked really well. Um, thinking about your planning, careful stage planning, uh, almost that backwards planning model. So you start with, um, the objective that you want to achieve, then work back in a very stage way, but building in maybe more of those practice um, and scaffolding aspects to your planning. Um, thinking about quizzing, regular quizzing, and again, the LBQ is a really useful platform for that. And we've just started using as well, because we use Microsoft, and we've started using their forms as well. They've got quiz, quiz forms on, uh, on Microsoft, which you can use and embed into um, PowerPoints, which the children can complete and then they get sent back to you and you can see what the pupils have done. So that's a really useful area. But again, it, it, new information is, is quite a challenge to, to get to all children, I think. Um, questioning, obviously the role of questioning on, on a Zoom platform or on a, a live platform, um, again, is challenging. Uh, we ask a lot of questions, um, Within lessons, carefully constructed questions can gauge the extent to which children have learnt, what they've been taught, and also those misconceptions. Um, now, I've had a look out there. I think what we do is obviously we use the chat function quite a lot when we use Zoom. So we can come in and out of that. We can use the visualizer quite a lot. Um, but again, it's just creating those, some diagnostic questions and some questions which are obviously just seeing whether the children are understanding what you're doing. Um, one thing that I haven't tried, but I have put it on the link at the end of this session, is whiteboard.fi. Um, I think I've seen a few mixed reviews about it, but it might be worth a look, uh, where each child has their own virtual whiteboard, which they can write on and then send to you. Um, we use Purple Mash. Again, that can be quite an interactive thing where you can ask the children questions to and to do live responses. Um, it's got a brilliant concept mapping tool on Purple Mash. And again, the children can engage with them, with each other and also engage with you um, in a live forum. So that works really well. Um, and then 
it has an aspect on it to write. So you can, again, in English, you can have a shared writing option. So you can do some writing and the children actually can do some shared writing as well. So again, just that question to think about how do we include this strong interactive aspect um, during our remote learning session. So have a little think about that when we go into our breakout room. And this one is really quite a challenging one um, where I don't really have lots of answers for, but I think it's worth us going away and having a little think about this. The pupils are less able to engage in that constructive rearticulation re of the learning, uh, talking to each other, using, well, we use our knowledge maps and they're testing each other. Lots of things going on in the classroom, which is really challenging to do when you're online. Um, these actors force the children to articulate their learning. We found this particularly useful across the curriculum. Uh, our mastery programme is really embedded in this where it has very much partner talk um, as an essential component of it. Um, we obviously teach the effective maths um, through Zoom, but again, it's, it's trying to get that component which works so well in the classroom and get that to happen. Now, I know our year six have um, dabbled in breakout rooms for the children to do those different sorts of things. Um, there's the talk function. Um, but again, this is a tricky one. Um, so I think maybe coming back together and, and having a real think about um, how we get children to, to do this. I know on our class dojo format, they can uh, video themselves. They can, um, there is a function where they can do that. But again, it's, it's a challenge, I think. So I think without, without children exploring issues together and, and having that dialogue with each other, it's really, it's really challenging for, the, for them to embed that learning, that long-term learning that we want them to do. Um, they can do a little bit with the teacher, but really that's the thing I'm looking out for um, as we move forward. Okay, so it is five past five, and we did say around about this time we were going to go into breakout rooms, Georgina, to have a little think about um, really what was working well in schools, just giving you a chance to have a talk to each other, because I know everybody's kind of in the same boat here and we're all looking for solutions. We've all got some great ideas. So again, I do want you to think about how we gauge new content, um, how do we question children effectively, and how do we promote this discussion um, within, within that sort of a virtual world. I've also added this last bit on their feedback, because I think, obviously, um, we've got various things going on to help feedback with LBQ and our various systems. Uh, Dojo has a fantastic feedback system. So the work comes to you, you can feedback, you can send it back as a draft and they can, you can have a dialogue with the, with the pupils um, on, um, on Class Dojo. So that is a really fantastic way. Sorry, Georgina. So if we um, go to the uh, breakout rooms now. Um, I found that really useful. Hopefully um, you did too. Again, the stumbling, but I think gauging Gauging how new content is being understood is a thing that is definitely developing across schools uh, with the with the feedback that you can have in different platforms. I think that's that's really good. Um, questioning again happens, but it might happen a little more slowly. Um, but again, this discussion within the children is something that I'm really interested in continuing to look look for ideas. Um, and I think feedback and is happening across schools. Um, you know, obviously in the platforms that you that you use. Um, the last couple of things. Um, oops. Just last couple of things were just to think about the rose and shine principles about whether that is happening in the lessons. Just the five I've picked out. Uh, begin a lesson with a short review. Present material in small steps. Try and ask a large number of questions, but we know that is quite challenging. Providing those models and scaffolding for, diff diff for difficult tasks um, and engaging children in those uh, daily, weekly and monthly reviews. And this is the last slide, um, which again, it just looks at um, EFF did a home learning um, planning framework, which is very similar. It's about activating, explaining, practicing, reflecting, and reviewing. Um, Sorry, again, Greg, just to interrupt. I, I don't think you're sharing your slides. I don't know if you're wanting to. I was going to. Am I not? No. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thanks. Um, right, just let me... Okay. 
Okay. Right, I'm not sure where that has gone, the sharing aspect of my Zoom. Anyway, not to worry. <laughs> I think that's just disappeared from my, um, from my screen, the sharing bit. Um, so that was the last thing, really. And that last slide, um, obviously, you're going to share that, aren't you, Georgina? The PowerPoint, if they need it. Yeah, is that right? yeah I will do. And I'll, I'll just quite try and share them now, actually, as well. Just uh, I think I can share my screen. I'll just pop okay. it up. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. You've, you've got it. Yeah, that was it. There we go. There we go. Sorry. So that, yeah, that, so, <laughs> yeah. so just a couple of things really um, about um, feedback. Um, I found this was quite useful in terms of thinking about how we feedback to children. Um, the five R's of feedback by uh, Tom Sheringham. So we've got redrafting pieces of work. These are sort of things you can send back to pupils. Um, redo this piece of work, but this time make sure you include X or Y. Uh, rehearse and repeat. Um, again, these could be just practices or things like LBQ, maths, facts in a flash, using knowledge organizers, uh, getting children to revisit and respond to things. We use that a lot with our knowledge organizers going back to previous learning from different topics. And again, relearning things, getting children to really relearn something and say, tomorrow we're going to really want you to relearn something from your knowledge organisers. We'll come to tomorrow in a chat and we'll, we'll, we'll do some quizzing together on that as well. Um, OK, and then that last slide is just some links. Um, so the top one was a remote learning solution. So this was from those, if you use Google Classrooms or Google, um, this was about writing and different areas which you could use. Um, one of the nice things I saw from that was where you could actually have um, five or six, seven different pieces of writing up in front of you, which you could see the children in a live mode writing, and then obviously you can interact with them. Um, so that's quite an interesting one. Um, there's the feedback in action one, which I showed you. Uh, teacher toolkit online. So there's 47 different ideas, um, various things on there. And then that last one is the EFF, EEF, um, home learning planning framework as well, which I showed you on the previous slide. Okay. Thank you all for sharing. Um, I thought the breakout room was really interesting, uh, getting to talk to other teachers about where we are. Um, I really think that a lot of schools have moved forward um, in leaps and bounds really from that first lockdown. I know we're thinking about our school, how far we've come, but I think the main thing is we haven't changed too much. We've just tried to develop what we've got and do it in a more um, uh, structured way, really. Okay, Georgina, back to you. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, I'm just having a look to see if there's any questions in the chat. I don't think there's any questions, but there's a lot of, a lot of thanks in the chat and just saying it's really helpful to sort of to reaffirm that people are heading in the right direction and things as well. Um, so if anyone does have any chat, uh, any questions, do by all means pop them in the chat um, and, and we can ask them to Greg. But um, otherwise, um, I will send out a, a follow-up email um, tomorrow after this, just with the copy of the PowerPoint and some of the links that um, Greg has mentioned and a link to LBQ as well. Um, and um, just otherwise an enormous thank you to Greg for, for putting this together and, and taking, um, taking so much of the time and I know you're so busy um, to, to put this together and, and share what you've been doing at Manalise. It's uh, enormously helpful. Um, and I think it's been really helpful for everybody. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly just pop um, a feedback form in the chat if people wouldn't mind just clicking on that and filling that in just after this session. That would be really helpful. And I'll clean, include that in the email tomorrow as well. Um, but as far as I can see, there aren't any questions. So unless there's anything you want to add, Greg, then I think we probably wrap it up here. No, it's just that I think it's just been a really useful session. It was, it was really useful for me to actually go back and have a look at what we were doing in a bit more depth and think about, especially think about some of those questions um, about, you know, what the barriers are to uh, remote learning. It's really, you know, if, the, if we're going to do this for a number of weeks to come, we really need to start thinking about how we get children talking to each other, how we improve those feedback models, 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm out there looking as well and trying to develop what we've got. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg, for, for all of your energy you've put into this. It's been really, really fantastic. And I think based on based on everything in the chat, uh, people are enormously grateful and I found this really, really helpful. So thank you very much.